ever wonder where do painting ideas come from? Today I'll show you my creative process. So many things inspire me. Movies, books, social media, galleries, mentors, nature. But to stand out in a sea of amazing art, you must think outside the box. Set your creativity on high. But before you pick up your paintbrush and get deep into painting, it's best to get prepared. I like to start with a photo shoot. So with my idea in mind, I grab my camera and the necessary props and start shooting. I take tons of pictures. Better safe than sorry. In this instance, I gave my models wardrobe instructions and then met them at the beach with my tricycle in hand. The male figure model, he came to the photo shoot with the wrong shirt color and shoes, but no problem, I fixed it in editing. After the photo shoot, I put the pictures into the computer and used Photoshop to work some magic. And here's what I ended up with which led me to my final finished painting, Requiem. Welcome to my channel, Shelley J. Cox. Come along with me on my art journey. Once you have your reference image ready, it's helpful if you pull it up on a nice size monitor or tablet next to your easel, like I've done here. Let's go over the creative process for the painting that's on my easel right now. Here's the original photo that I picked out of hundreds to put in Photoshop and play with and this is where I ended up. Now let me show you how I got there. All right, with the image pulled up in Photoshop, I cropped and desaturated it. That was the first thing I did. After that, I duplicated the original image, put a mask on it, and then let the colored version of her shine through. Then I further darkened the background. Then I overlaid this reddish background just to the behind the figure. Then I added the sky above on the top part of the background and left the reddish on the bottom part to create this landscape look. Next I added a vignette to the bottom only and then we put a full vignette around the entire image. Oh my gosh, look at the difference between the original photo and the photoshopped image. Sometimes an image can spark an idea for a new painting. These two images led me to develop my painting Amphitrite. First thing I did was set up a photo shoot with a model. She was mimicking uh, being a mermaid sitting on top of a bubble, holding a wand, blowing a bubble through it, and she was gonna have angel wings and found all these different references to help me complete my vision. Once I had my reference material in place, I developed a color scheme for my painting. And here she is, Amphitrite. Greek goddess of the sea and wife of Poseidon. One of the ways I like to get my reference material is to freeze frame video. And with this one, I actually freeze framed a YouTube video of the famous photographer, Peter McKinnon. So here's the original YouTube video that I freeze framed and worked from. Then I took some elements from a few other videos that help describe who Peter McKinnon is and his personality like his interest in magic and his love of coffee. Let me show you how I created my painting reference. First, I load the freeze-framed image into Photoshop. Then I cut out the coffee from the last freeze-framed image and placed it on top of the original image. Next, I extracted a tattoo element and placed it on his shoulder in the background. Then on another layer, I dropped in some cards from a different image. And there you have it, the photoshopped image with all the elements layered in on top. I even left in the YouTube video bar at the bottom of the reference. I thought that looked cool. And here you have the final painting, Peter McKinnon, painted in my persona portrait style. If you want to learn more about how you can do all this cool stuff in Photoshop, check out their book, Classroom in a Book. You'll find a link in the description. I painted another one of my favorite YouTubers, 10 hundred. So here's the image that I freeze framed from his YouTube video. So the first thing I did was to remove the background from the freeze frame. Then with my Wacom tablet, I drew in the background for this one. And here's the final portrait of 10 hundred in my persona style. And here's another look at how I like to set up my painting area. So here's a new image that I just started working on in Photoshop. Here's a look at the photograph that I started with. The next thing I did was increase the saturation and pull out the dress to be fuller on the bottom. 
So Photoshop has this really cool overlay feature so you can take an image and put it on top of your original image and they blend together beautifully. So I'll show you how I took the wet city street, the stardust neon sign, and then the sky and overlaid that onto my original image and got these really cool effects. Here I'll take you through the Photoshop steps. First I cropped it into a square and then increased the saturation. So it looks like the next thing I did was to decrease the brightness. Then using the overlay feature, I put in that cloud layer. Then I dropped that wet city street scene on top of the original image. And I was playing with removing the clouds, so when I take them away, the city street scene gets a little more intense, which I like. So I dropped the clouds out. Next, with the overlay feature, I put the stardust sign on top of everything. And here I added a second layer of the stardust sign to make it more vivid. There's also a mask on each stardust layer so that I can remove it from the figure. Next, put on a full vignette. So the figure was looking a little lost, so I added another copy of just the figure on top of everything. Then I painted on top of the photo to emphasize some of those watermarks and the wet city street. And that's how I created my reference material for the painting I will be doing, which is called Floating in Vegas. The next painting reference we'll talk about was done for this painting titled Earth Mother. The model I used in my photo shoot for this painting did not have this tattooed sleeve, so I gathered some reference material that I thought would help me in painting this element, and I popped it all together in Photoshop, which we'll go over now. So here's the image that I selected out of the hundreds that I took during the photo shoot. I put it in Photoshop. I make this little palette to the side so I can do my color selections and put all the paint palette colors there. So a lot of what I do in Photoshop is really just experimenting. And here you can see I'm determining what I want to do with the light slash darkness of the lower part of her dress. I went with showing more of the leg. Now we're getting ready to put in some of those tattoo elements. So I cut out this tattoo sleeve from one of the images I had earlier and I placed it on her arm and I add some more to the lower arm. The transform tool lets you bend and straighten elements to fit the areas you need them to be in. So I'm gonna zoom out, take a look at everything in the full view and drop it into black and white to check my values, make sure I've got everything grouped color-wise appropriately. And now we're gonna go back into that tattoo and add a couple of the special elements that I wanted to make sure are in my sleeve, like this blue bird and then we add in this little frog detail and a butterfly up on the shoulder. So now I have a really good idea of my painting's composition and value structure. I've taken out all of the guesswork. So here's how the finished painting compared to the reference. So as you can see, there's a lot of preparatory work that goes on to get ready for a painting. From the photo shoot, to finding which photo you even want to use, sifting through hundreds and hundreds of photos, and then putting it in Photoshop and just experimenting, playing. I mean, half the time when I put this stuff in Photoshop, I don't have a clear idea of where it's gonna go. I just kind of play with it and then the ideas come as I'm doing it. Other times I do have a clear idea. So then I'm trying to manipulate the photo to fit my image. Sometimes I just put it in Photoshop to crop it, maybe lighten or dark, vignette it. Uh, very little uh, editing in that area goes on. So if you don't have Photoshop, not a big deal. You can do the same type of editing, um, experimenting by just sketching or doing a quick paint study. It does not have to happen in a computer. It just so happens. I like that. I find it easy. I can move things around quickly. So really the main takeaway from this is to be prepared before you start actually painting. Take your time with the preparatory um, things that you want to do. In the beginning when I first started painting, I really skipped over this step. I mean, very little preparatory work was done. I never put thought into the value structure of my painting. A little bit of thought went into the composition but I never really explored it like I do now, like move things around. What if I did this or what if I did that? I mean, really think about it and 
play with it for maybe a day or two before you even settle on it because ideas will change and you'll feel differently about it with fresh eyes maybe the next day. So take your time with the composing of your painting. Don't just jump into painting right away. Uh, that's what I used to do. And my paintings were eh, they were okay. But you will create masterpieces when you plan and take your time and really put the work into being ready to paint. So that's it for today's video. If you liked it and you got some value, hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you want to come along with me on this crazy art journey and have a good one. See you in the next video.